Hey, my name is Jonathan, product designer at AJ and Smart, and today we're gonna to give you five tips on how to become a way better UX designer. So what you're gonna see in this video is us asking some of our top designers what they use to level up their UX skills and what sort of things they would do if they were teaching someone who is junior, you know, like what way could you level up your UX skills? So what sort of resources would you use or what sort of things would you do? So hope you find this useful and do let us know in the comments what resources or what tips you have for becoming a better UX designer or what sort of questions you have for our design team here at AJ and Smart. All right, let's go. Hi, I'm Amr and I'm one of the UX researchers on the Sprint team and I have two tips for you today to become a better UX and product designer. So tip number one is to subscribe to an awesome newsletter called Product Habits by a guy called Heechin Shaw. This guy has um, designed and released a few products that you've probably heard of like um, Kissmetrics and one more that I'm forgetting at the moment, but he's a very smart guy and his newsletter is awesome. He pulls articles from the web about uh, product design and stuff that is always a really, really good read. So that's my first tip. And my second tip is actually not so much related to one specific person, but more of a process that you can follow. So the way that I actually find inspiration in my design work is that I go and look at apps that I really love and I think are really well designed. And then I look for the developer that made them and then see if they talk about their design design process and their thought process somewhere online. So it could be on Twitter, it could be a podcast, it could be a blog, anything. And so like for me, it's following Marco Arment, following Mark Edwards um, and Jared Sinclair, but he no longer posts about these stuff. But regardless of the people that I follow, you should just go look at the apps that you love, look at, look for the people who made them, and then see if they talk about their thought process because it's really helpful to see how they arrived at the design decisions um, that they made. And I think that will make you a better designer by doing so. So when I meet someone who's trying to figure out how to just get better at being a UX designer or a UI designer, um, and I guess my answer is kind of going to be a bit more boring and tactical than everyone else's. What I get them to do is look at the guidelines for some of the biggest platforms. So for example, um, iOS, so uh, for any Apple device like iPhones, um, Apple has their own human interface guidelines. Um, in fact, there's a whole web page dedicated to all the different interactions, uh, all the different animations, all of the different uh, kind of rules for designing products on that platform. And the cool thing is there are really just two platforms, right? There's iOS and there's Android. And both of these platforms have really excellent documentation. Um, both iOS and, and Android, uh, Google has material design and Google's material design documentation is beautiful. It's really amazing, it's really clear. And I think that one really big problem that I see for, with a lot of designers is that they're sort of learning UX design in an abstract way or they're learning like UX and UI design from apps that are on the market or from Dribbble and these apps are already breaking the rules because they are you know the people who are designing these things are often so good at understanding the basics that they know how to break the rules whereas I think um, it, it's super important to know the basics and even some of the best designers um, I still sometimes see them using like a you know a, a, a modal pop-up when it doesn't make sense having a back button when it doesn't make sense. I think it's important for a designer to know when when you tap on something, how do you know whether it should come up over the screen and how do you know when it should slide in from the right. And I think things like that are super important to understand. And to understand those things, look at the guidelines for iOS, look at the guidelines, the material design guidelines. And honestly, I think that's like a really, it seems like a really basic tip, but uh, I check the guidelines every so often when I'm uh, when I'm stuck and I'm wondering, oh, like should this be an overlay or should should this, should this be should I have the tab bar at the end? I, I think that those sort of things are easily answered when you go and look at the systems and the design systems for these larger platforms. And uh, the documentation is really really great. So that's my advice. Hi, I'm Dee. I'm a product designer, design sprint facilitator, and design sprint educator at AJ and Smart. And my top tip for progressing your UX product design career is a bit left field, and it is volunteering at events, meetups, conferences, volunteering 
to even just do really simple things like helping like run the event, move chairs around, get coffee, all the things that seem like you have more important things to do. <laughs> Volunteering for stuff like that will just expose you to other really cool and probably more senior people in the industry who are running these kinds of events, um, who have probably very interesting careers because they're choosing to run a conference or run an event or run a meetup so that they can share this knowledge and their passion for their industry to the rest of the world and to the design community. So you're exposing yourself to um, tons of senior people who really care about what they do and you're probably exposing yourself to a ton of information as well. You're probably getting a free ticket to the conference, being able to meet all the people that come to the meetup and just exposing yourself to, to more opportunities in your career and more um, passion and excitement in your work. But there's one caveat I have for this tip is it will not work if you're just using it as a little hack and you don't actually care and you're not actually enthusiastic. But if you're super enthusiastic to get into the industry and super enthusiastic about your field, about UX design or product design or whatever it is, if you're really excited about it, this will work for you. This, is, this worked for me from the very beginning of my career. I've been doing this volunteering and also running events and I love it and it's made a huge impact on my career. I've met people who have offered me jobs then from these kinds of things. So it will work as long as you're excited about it. My name is Rob, I am a product design director here at AJ and Smart. And my top tip for becoming a better UX designer is to just be really aware of new products that are coming to market. And you can gain a lot of inspiration and you can also learn a lot from how um, like new uh, UX problems have been solved. But also what I would add, like to add to that point is that you don't have to be kind of restricted to what's been done. Always question whether something can be made uh, more streamlined, more intuitive uh, or just more easier uh, to use. So use those as a benchmark and then uh, feel free to kind of do your own thing to them. I try and do a download an app a day and it's just good to kind of really broaden your horizons with these new apps. And there's so many, obviously there's new, so many apps you can never keep up with them, but it's just good to kind of keep your hand in at what the, you know, what's becoming the benchmark for, for best practices within designing mobile interfaces. Hi, my name is Tim. I am a product design director at Agent Smart, and um, I've been in the design industry for over 10 years now. I started off as a UX and UI designer for uh, agencies. So one, piece of advice that I would give is to find really, really good mentors to learn from. Um, I really liked uh, working with people who have um, a clear attitude toward the, towards the work that they're doing for clients and who didn't just treat it as this kind of like random thing where ju they're just kind of like doing their magic and nobody really understood what the job was. So they had a very, very good, like, oh, like a clarity to them, uh, how they conducted themselves in their job and they could also very clearly tell you why they were doing things in a specific way and I would recommend everyone who's starting out to look for people like that and ask them a lot of questions and working with people who already had like a long track record definitely helped me because I think especially in the beginning you were feeling kind of lost because it's very overwhelming um, you know doing like working in your first job and in some company and realizing that you're a little bit out of your depth so yeah, I think if you just find one or two persons like that and you get to you get them to share their experience with you and almost like take you under their wings and work with them more often, it, it can really help. And I mean, usually when you have a relationship to people like that, they will also be the first one who approach you and ask you to work on something with them because they know that you are a person who is actually really interested in doing great work with them. And I mean, you really have to, to show that you you want to do these things and that's super rambly but that's my my advice so i really hope you like watching this video and i hope there's a few things in there that you can take away do let us know in the comments if you have any other questions or if you have any other tips for us and give this video a like if you enjoyed it now if you're interested in learning more and more and more about product design we do have a weekly podcast every monday morning called the product breakfast club podcast also check that out ton of free stuff. We've got some really great guests on the podcast like Jason Freed, like Kim Scott, lots and lots of other guests. So if you're interested in the product designer tech world, definitely check that podcast out and have a great week. Bye bye. Because it makes us feel popular. Oh. Hi, I'm <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs>
is us. <laughs> the Jane Smart at office. <laughs> 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 Quick, we have a bit of pat down on the regular right hand side. Um, Here? Yeah. 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 Okay.